We're in chapter 7, muscular system. Muscles function, create movement, stabilize joint, maintain posture, and generating heat. The muscle cells, they have this characteristic. They're able to contract and excitability, they're able to generate electrical signal. So this one is similar to nervous tissue. Next chapter, we'll talk about the nervous tissue. Uh, both the muscle and neuron are excitable. Extensibility is able to increase its distance. Elasticity is able to bend. So these are the characteristics of the muscle. This is the, the heart muscle on the petri dish. So they are able to contract. We have three different kinds of muscles. The ones you can voluntarily control, we call the skeletal muscle. And you have the cardiac muscle and smooth muscle you could not voluntarily control. So today we'll mainly focus on the skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle look like this under the microscope. So your first lab activity today, you need to be able to identify what kind of muscle it is. And skeletal muscle look like this. So they, they have almost no branch. Second characteristic, their nucleus, this nuclei being pushed to the side. So it's very difficult to identify this is one cell, this is another, because they all fuse together. So their nuclei being pushed to the side. And when we talk about the muscle, we usually call the muscle fibers because they fuse together. And the third characteristic, you found they have those light, dark band, we call the striated pattern. And those dark band, we would call it A band, and the light one called I bend. This tell you their microfiber fiber, microfilaments line up pretty well so they can produce a big power. And these are the characteristic of skeletal muscle. Muscles are pretty well organized. These are the muscle fiber, this is the cellular level. And you put a lot of muscle fiber together and you surround with the uh, peri Mesia. So the muscle fiber, you use the endomesia and cover it. And now you have those muscle fibers together. That's called the fascicle. Fascicle is you can, uh, it's a unit. And you put a lot of fascicles together. Outside you put the paramecians. And now you have a big muscle. And epimesium, that's the connective tissue, cover it. So, and in the, in the, Muscle, you have the blood vessel, you have the nerve. So by definition, if I give you a big muscle, it's actually an organ. So these slides show you the cross-section of those muscle fibers. It's pretty, pretty well organized. Muscle connect to bones through tendon. So tendon is the dense connective tissue. And sometimes you have the flat layer it's called the aponeurosis, similar to the tendon. And this show you the muscle fiber structure. So muscle membrane we call the sarcolemma. And the inside of the cell is the cytoplasm. So in the muscle we call the sarcoplasm. And in the cells we have SR. And in the muscle it become uh, in in the cell we have er smooth er in the muscle it become the sr and sr is a container of calcium so for the muscle contraction you need a lot of calcium and that's the sr they also have the t tubule transverse tubule its function is to pass the electrical signal from the surface to the inside of every muscle fiber so t tubule these are the t tubule perpendicular to the muscle fiber and the contracting unit is called the myofibule, and the small repetitive structure is called the sarcomere. And this slide show you your muscle fiber. They have those light, dark patterns. So the A band is the dark, and I band is the light one. And in the skeletal muscle, you have those repetitive structure. It's called the sacromere. And in the skeletal muscle, they have a lot of sacromere. So this is one sacromere, and there's another sacromere. These are the repetitive structure. 
and each sacral mirror they're made of the thick filament and thin filaments so there's mild filaments and the thick one and the thin one they pretty well organized and between the zig line and z line this one sacral mirror so zigzag line this is the z line and from the z to another z this one sacral mirror and in the skeletal muscle just have those repetitive structure and inside the muscle fiber so this is a cellular label and if you forget uh, which label you are in just look at the nucleus so the nucleus tell you that's the cellular label and that's the muscle fiber this is the muscle cell and these are the sarcolemma and now we are looking at the inside so inside these small filaments myofibule and this is the sarcomere structure you have the thick filaments the thin filaments is an overlapping model so it's, it's like the gliding window of your uh, bathroom so when the muscle contract contraction happens is they they overlap more is a gliding model when they overlap the whole sarcomere from the z line to the z line becomes shorter so the whole sarcomere becomes shorter and skeletal muscle are made of a lot of sarcomere so the whole skeletal muscle gets shorter when they contract and muscle connect to bones through tendon and when the muscle becomes shorter it can pull a bone closer to the other bone that's how they create the movement and this slide show you the the sacromere structure you have the thick filament you have the thin filament it's an overlapping model so they overlap and the sacromere is from a z to another z and this center part there's a gap we call the H zone so H zone is the one you have only the thick filaments and from here to here they look dark so that's the that's the A band and from here to here they look light that's the I band so when you take a, take a knife cut the I band you see the thin filaments only and when you cut the H zone you see thick, man, thick filaments only and when you cut the A band, most of the time you will see the both the thick and thin filaments because it's an overlapping model. And that's how they look under the microscope. You have the A band, thick filaments, I band, thin filaments, and between the Z line and Z line, sometimes they call the Z disc, sometimes they call the Z line, and this is the sarcomere. So that's the structure. So now let's look at the myofilaments. In the thin filaments, they use the actin as a protein. In the thick filaments, it's myosin. So these two proteins, they naturally want to glue. They are like two strong magnets. They naturally want to glue. And because of that, muscle can easily contract. So the thin filaments, mainly the actin. Thick filaments, mainly the myosin. And in the thin filaments, they have more structure. They have the triple myosin. Triple myosin is, is the protein block the binding site of the actin. It's like two strong magnets. They glue together and very strong. That's the muscle contraction. You still want to have muscle relaxation. So you put a few pieces of paper between those two strong magnets. So now the actin and the myosin, like, they, they still attach, but they are much weaker. And this is the triple myosin function. So they bind the binding site of actin. And actin and myosin just just, my, just uh, hang in there. So they are not strong contraction. And if you want to have a muscle contraction, strong muscle contraction, you need to have the triple myosin shine away. And then the actin and myosin, like two strong magnets, they will glue. And you need to have a sensor to pick up the signal. And the sensor is a triple N. So triple N is the sensor. What's the signal? The signal is calcium. So in the SR, you have a lot of calcium. And because when the muscle contraction happens, you need a lot of calcium. So calcium released from the SR, calcium will bind with triple N. You will ask triple myosin shine away. When the triple myosin shine away, the actin and myosin, like two strong magnets, they will, they will glue together in this muscle contraction. So when the muscle relaxation, they look like this. 
that's the sacromere you see the a band you see the i band there's a z to another z line and that's the h zone and when the muscle contraction happens that's what happened it's an overlapping model so when they overlap more and the whole sacromere becomes shorter and when we look at this model we found the the a band remain the same because a band is the dark filament area so the filament does not get shorter they just overlap more that's why the a band remain the same but the i band becomes shorter because they overlap more there's less space for the thin filaments only that's why the i band gets shorter and h zone you find the h zone disappear so the whole sarcomere becomes shorter and this slide show you the uh, muscle fiber model so today the lab the second activity you need to learn this model and you have those t tubule this is like a network transverse tubule so the signal from the outside from the neuron will go to the surface and will go through the t tubule from the t tubule will connect to the sr sr is the calcium container so this blue network that's the sr and the t tubule connect to the sr through this area so the area connect to the sr connect to the t tubule is called the terminal cisterna so each t tubule always go with two terminal cisterna so one t tubule ter terminal cisterna terminal cisterna so together these three is called the triad so triad is one t tubule with two terminal cisterna and the signal will go to the SR, SR going to release calcine, and calcine will bind with triponin as tripomyosin shine away, actin and myosin have strong muscle contraction, and that's in the inside, that's the sacromere. That's after you peel the SR away, and the inside, that's the structure, sacromere. So the sacromere are made of the thick filaments, thin filaments. So there's a thin filament, there's a thick, thick filament, and they overlap. So when the muscle relaxation, that's what, how the sarcomere look like. And when the muscle contraction happens, that's how it look like. They overlap more. So the eye band become shorter, edge zone become shorter, sometimes it disappear, and the A band remain the same. And the contraction process uh, start from the calcine. Calcine will bind with triponin, x tripomyosin shine away. And the actin bind with myosin, they call the cross bridge structure. And this video and these three videos show you the muscle contraction. So if you are interested, you can take a look how the muscle contraction happened. And the signal actually comes from neuron. So you decide, your brain decides you want to move this muscle or that muscle. So the signal comes from the neuron. Neuron gonna release neurotransmitter. The neurotransmitter released by motor neuron, the neuron control muscle, is acetylcholine. A C E T Y L C H O L I N E acetylcholine. Or you can use abbreviation. They always use the capital A, capital C, small h. That's acetylcholine. This neurotransmitter will bind with the cell membrane of the skeletal muscle. So this gap, is, this area is called the uh, neuromuscular junction. So between the neuron to the muscle, neuromuscular junction. And this surface area, they call the motor end plate. So motor end plate, uh, in the lab today you will see it. That's the surface area of the cell membrane of the muscle. They, they, they're innervated by neuron. And they're gonna release neurotransmitter and trigger electrical signal of the muscle and the electrical signal gonna go through the t-tubule through the t-tubule and go to every muscle fiber and t-tubule connect with terminal cisterna terminal cisterna connect with sr and the sr gonna release calcium so after the calcium release calcium will bind with triponin and when it bind with triponin tripomyosin shine away and after triple myosin shine away, actin and myosin like two strong magnet, and they just glue together. That's the muscle contraction. So that's the process of muscle contraction. And let's take a short break.